Hello, this is Richard Wilson, and today I'm going to talk to you about how to start a family office. I'm coming to you from Zurich, Switzerland, one of the top kind of hot spots or hubs for family office activity in the world, actually. Um, I just got done interviewing 36 different single and multifamily offices over the past three weeks, including three of them based right here in Zurich. And it was interesting because I got to interview a few smaller size family offices, you know, in the 100, 100 million to 500 million size. Um, but 90% of them were either top 50 family offices um, or very large, well-established family offices that have been around for 10, 20, 30 years. Um, but what I've found is that for running the family office group, that lots of wealth management firms wish they offered a full family office suite of services. And lots of people that work, work inside of private banks and trusts email me saying they want to start a multifamily office. How can I do it? And they're always asking for advice. So I wanted to create this video so that I could point you towards some at least some 5,000 foot things to consider, to plan out, and to investigate before you go forward with launching the family office. So the first thing that you should know up front is that it's not easy. Um, it's like starting a hedge fund in that it's not simple or everybody would do it, everybody would be making a lot of money. A lot of people have been starting family offices and hedge funds, but they don't always work out, obviously. And the cost of running a family office is pretty significant. Um, from all the research and studies and people that I've spoken with, it really seems like your initial assets need to be between 50 million and 100 million of committed capital, not just um, you know people promising that they'll move their money over, but actually people that are signing papers saying they're going to move their capital o over where they already have, and you just need to unfold now the full suite of family office services. It really seems like if you have less than 50 million and hopefully 100 million, that it's going to be relatively challenging to take on all the costs of hiring a risk consultant when you need one. We're always looking out for your clients first instead of having to operate on such a shoestring budget that you kind of have to, you know, not be as thorough as you could be if you had more resources. Um, that said, you know, many family offices do succeed by focusing on serving their clients, um, and many of them do start with very little in assets, usually just one or two clients that kind of push them over the edge and get them started in the practice. Um, another couple things to watch out for is that uh, many times when I speak with family offices, I ask them, you know, what, what's the most important person to have on your team first if you were starting a family office today? And most of them have, in the past, hired a CPA first, or the family office was started by a CPA. I found that an overwhelming number of times. Probably 80% of the family offices I know were started by somebody with a CPA background. Oftentimes that's because they're seen as the advisor on tax and investment issues and as an objective source of opinion. Um, if it's not a CPA, then generally it's a financial advisor or a wealth advisor who started the family office. Um, but really, that's one of the first people you should probably have in place, is a CPA or somebody that has taxation knowledge relevant to the types of clients you want to serve. If you're serving a global client base, um, because you're in a place such as Monaco or, let's say, Singapore, then you're going to need somebody with some global exposure or at least some global contacts who to go to for global taxation and asset management advice. If, um, for example, like some family offices I've spoken with are based in the United States and they really only work with the United States clients who sometimes have assets in other places, but it's not really common. It's more of the exception that they have significant exposures in other countries. So that your amount of tax knowledge in-house is going to depend on what types of clients you plan on serving and where you're geographically based. But it's something you should definitely consider up front. Um, your first hire should probably be somebody with a CPA accounting taxation background and hopefully somebody that's dealt with multi-generational wealth and trust in the states a lot. Um, that's, these are just critical things if you're running a family office. You have to be able to manage multi-generational wealth challenges and issues that come up with all different types of situations. Because when you sit down with a client, you know, the whole point of offering the family office is to have everything under one roof. There are some models out there where people outsource and they bring in experts as needed, but most family offices to be successful, you need to have everybody in under one roof, um, except for perhaps a risk consultant or institutional consultant. And it's not going to impress clients, it's not going to win you over clients if with every question you have to go to some outside expert and have it answered. So make sure that if you have to give away a percentage of ownership, a percentage of profits, uh, something that vests over three to five years, so the percentage of profits is started to be provided to that professional after three or five years of them working for the family office, I would say do it. Be creative and flexible because you need someone very experienced on the team or you're not going to win over the client. So if that person helps win over one extra client 
of 30 or 50 million dollars, they could pay for that, might pay for their own salary um, at that point uh, and make it worth you know, doing those creative type of negotiations. So I hope that suggestion helps. Uh, there's a couple more things that I uh, should keep in mind. One, like I mentioned in one of my videos about how to create a successful family office, is to run everything like a well-oiled machine. There should be a step-by-step -step process for everything you do, from your marketing to your client onboarding process, to your performance and risk management processes, to how the client leaves, what that process is. Not just for compliance reasons, but just so your business is ran very smoothly. And if you're out of the office for a day or traveling to some place like here in Zurich, Switzerland, uh, you know, things don't, get hay don't go haywire with you out of the office. Everything's run on a system and not just based on things in your mind. The final uh, suggestion for starting a family office is to make sure that you have day-to-day, week-to-week, month-to-month, and quarter-to-quarter reviews of performance, risk, and operations. Uh, it's just really critical that everyone in your family office knows that your clients are put first and you're managing the risk of your clients' assets before everything else. Every family office I've spoken to that's very successful says that capital preservation is their number one job. It's the family's job in the past to create their wealth. Now it's your job in running a family office to protect the wealth and to preserve the wealth. So make sure that, that is the number one concern of everything else is preserving the wealth of your clients and always putting them first. So I hope these ideas just help give you a little bit of a um, framework for things to consider. Uh, some suggestions for if you're planning out you know, a business plan for a multifamily office, some things to keep in mind. Uh, this is Richard Wilson coming to you from Zurich, Switzerland, and we'll keep in touch.